one of the landlocked countries in Africa. The country imports most of its goods through the Djibouti port. Since demerage and storage costs are very high at the seaport, establishing dry ports inside the country is a worthy option for Ethiopia. The dry port also helps to save time and minimize hassles of Ethiopian importers at the seaport. The payments for just keeping the containers in the seaport is costly, especially if it is uh, if it stays more than the grace period. The grace period in Djibouti for free is eight days. If it is more than that, it has it has many a lot of payments. In terms of saving foreign currency, it has an indispensable role. This is because the demerit cost is very high. In addition to that, this amount of money is paid abroad. But now the payment is less and it's paid to our own country. Therefore, the expansion of multimodal system and dry ports is very crucial and of paramount significance for landlocked countries like Ethiopia. Now, the government is shipping all containers on the way to get to the country's dry ports, whether government or private property. Before it's confiscated by the government of Djibouti, when six months of legacy period is over at its own cost, after that it will be given to the importers after undergoing through customs process. If owners of the container disappear, the commodities will be put up to auction and the money will be used for the benefit of the people of Ethiopia. Therefore, there is no chance of confiscation now. Ethiopia's economy has been growing at a double digit over the past several years uninterrupted. The dry ports which have been constructed in different parts of the country have paramount significance in supporting this fast-growing economy. Now uh, Ethiopia is growing fast, so the logistics also expected to uh, go faster, even more faster than the, the growth because it has to support the, uh, the growth of the country. Otherwise, uh, if it is not developed with the economy even faster than that, it will become a barrier for the development of the country, even for all the activities. Therefore, uh, now we are just striving to improve all the uh, activities in uh, uh, the logistics that uh, throughout the, the chain, starting from uh, Djibouti to the dry ports, even sometimes to door to door or to somewhere to the premises. Dry ports have many more advantages for a country. They facilitate fast distribution of goods to customers. Besides, they enhance the growth of towns and social development. Understanding this fact, Ethiopian government has been constructing dry ports in different parts of the country. We have uh, eight dry ports. In fact, some of them are rented. Uh, the first one here is you can start from uh, Magale, Kombercha, uh, Dreda, Samara, uh, Galan. Komet is also being used, Mojo, which is the largest, and Bakelcha for the railway terminal. So there are eight by now, some of them are rented, some of them are uh, ours. In connection with social matters, the construction of dry ports has been promoting social development. Local communities will have job opportunities. For example, Mojo Dry Port and Terminal have employed a number of Ethiopians on permanent and temporary basis. As we know, dry ports also promote the growth of towns. And that is exactly what you are observing in Mojo and Galan towns. Mojo Dry Port Terminal is one of the eight dry ports in Ethiopia. It is located in Mojo Town, 70 kilometers from the capital Addis Ababa. The port was constructed on 62 hectares of land. <laughs> Uh, 
This dry port was established by proclamation in line with the government's relevant plans. Its main purpose was facilitating transportation of import-export goods, particularly imported goods, in a short period of time. It's been benefiting Ethiopian investors and supporting the development of the country. Like any other dry ports in Ethiopia, Mojo Dry Port Terminal has all necessary facilities which help to conduct its day-to-day -day activities. The facilities include warehouses, banks, clinics, and much more. There is a huge warehouse in this dry port, occupying 5,400 square meters of land. Different types of goods have been stored in this warehouse after going through the normal checking and monitoring protocol. Sometimes, when we face a shortage of warehouse, we do staffing and unstaffing work outside the store, within the compound of the dry port. The facilities that they have are all the port facilities are there. That is the rich stackers, the forklifts are there. There are also other equipments that are important for handling all the cargos. So they uh, have different facilities, including all the maintenance workshops. Uh, there is also the yard itself, that means an investment which is an uh, infrastructure. We have also uh, all the staffs and the, the buildings, office buildings and others. My responsibility here is monitoring the incoming and outgoing commodities. The commodities are also inspected during staffing and unstaffing of goods. After the normal customs process, we hand over items to concerned importers. In this room, we mainly conduct a customs process. That is, we collect taxes and undertake monitoring and clearance work after the goods arrive at the dry port. Compared to other dry ports in Ethiopia, Mojo Dry Port is the largest in terms of size and the service it offers. Most of the country's imported goods are stored in this dry port. There are several services which are offered at this port. One of these main services is full container cargo handling. This service includes accommodating cargo trucks and moving containers within the port to manage the space. After going through the custom process, goods are distributed to appropriate locations in line with the requests of Ethiopian investors. Dry port service is new to our country. As it is new to the country, it may not satisfy everybody 100%. But it has been showing progress from time to time. In the past, it would take 14 days to bring a full container cargo from Djibouti to Ethiopia. But now, it is superior and quality of how we work is also showing much improvement. Now, we transport goods from Djibouti port to Ethiopia once a week. We have drastically minimized the fees that we used to pay for a service of 14 days. Seventy percent of Ethiopia's imported goods are served in Mojo Dry Port. These goods include medicines, agricultural inputs, spare parts, clothes and other commodities, which cannot be produced in Ethiopia and serve as an input for the country's economic development. The other dry port is the land container terminal. It occupies a total area of 21 hectares of land and of which 14.7 hectares of land is developed. The construction of this dry port cost more than 164 million bar. 
Ganong Dry Port has many facilities, which include container maintenance and painting, garage and warehouses. Previously, container maintenance would take place in Djibouti. Staffing and unstaffing of containers also used to take place there. When goods were staffed and unstaffed at the port of Djibouti, the work was accomplished by the workforce available there, which meant expanding foreign currency. Both in Mojo and Galan Dry Ports, there are modern and sophisticated machines which enhance the operations. The machines have created good opportunities for Ethiopians to get introduced to new technology. There are a lot of machineries that we use for different purposes. We use them to upload and download goods, which are packed in a container from the heavy trucks. We also use them to store and discharge goods from warehouses. Therefore, these machineries are enhancing the whole process from unpacking to delivery. This is a modern and heavy truck meeting international standards. The organization gave us training using international experts and spending significant amount of money. Now, I have acquired enough skills and knowledge so I can work anywhere at the international level using the new skill and experience. We are just trying to change all the human resources by giving all trainings and necessary uh, technologies. At the same time, we are also uh, just fulfilling all the uh, inputs for the dry ports, such as the port machineries and other equipment inside. Uh, there is also, uh, you know, an improvement in all the, uh, the structures and the way we work. Multimodal system is a system in which we transport goods to different parts of the country using more than two different modes of transport. In this regard, Ethiopia transports many of its goods to different parts of the country using multimodal system. The multimodal system is a system which has the capacity to provide significant and enhanced logistic services to our country. It has contributed a lot in supporting the country's overall development. Multimodal, Bebaru, Multimodal, Berasu, Project System, and the Yazamanino. Multimodal system by itself is a modern kind of system. It entertains a modern way of doing business. If we properly implement this project, importance in the country can benefit. After imported goods are distributed to importers using multimodal system, the next major task which can save huge amount of money for the country is sending back MPT containers to Djibouti. Empty containers are sent back to Djibouti as fast as possible because all of them are rented containers. The rent of containers increases as they stay here for long and which will incur the country's huge amounts of foreign currency. Therefore, we send them back to Djibouti immediately after their load is picked. This is actually how we manage empty containers. First, it reduces transportation costs that Ethiopia incurs to send back empty containers to Djibouti. Secondly, it will enable Ethiopian exporters to acquire containers in a short period of time nearby. This will minimize both transportation costs and cut time. There are many partners working closely at dry ports. These include the Ethiopian Quality and the Standards Authority, health centers, banks, and the Custom Authority. 
all conduct their day-to-day -day operation in collaboration. It is for the common benefit of enhancing service delivery to the customers. The Mojo branch of the Ethiopian Customs Authority and Dry Port work together. One cannot work in the absence of the other. When we face problems, we also solve them together. So both work together cooperatively. The Ethiopian Revenue and Customs Authority assigns standards to container cargoes after they arrive at the port. This means the containers are identified by colors. Thus, green signifies commodities which have no problems, yellow represents those with some damage, and red stands for four significantly damaged goods. This is the work of the Customs Authority. But since the goods which are identified as damaged or illegal have to be totally stuffed, the work is done at our terminal or dry port. All goods are unstuffed after they are counted, checked and monitored. <laughs> The service delivery is good. The customs process is becoming faster than before. Now, goods are distributed to investors without any delay. So, things are in a better state now. The checking time will not uh, will have a cost in other area in the port of uh, the seaport. But if you bring them here, you can have uh, even much time to do that. Then you can also save the, the payments, especially if it is in the in Djibouti, for example, the payment is in hard currency, then it is too much with uh, costy. It saves foreign currency. The goods are picked from Djibouti port as fast as possible and arrive here fast. After they go through all process at the dry port, the goods arrive at importers' warehouses in a day. The customs process is conducted in our own home country, not in another country. The importer uh, will not worry all about the goods. We bring them from the origin to the destination. At the same time, uh, they will not also go to Djibouti or somewhere for the clearance purpose. Or the clearance activities are just performed in the dry ports. Therefore, it saves them time. It also keeps the goods reliable. And all the responsibilities will be laid on us. So they will have a great advantage in saving time. At the same time, the cost is also reasonable for the transportation. Then, uh, with this, uh, I hope they will be benefited. The Ethiopian economy is growing very fast. To support this economy, the construction of a number of dry ports is well underway in different parts of the country. This would enable the country to save money and time that used to be wasted in Djibouti port to import goods from abroad.